Be Your Spirit, a guide to happiness and self-realization based on the Yoga Sutras. A happiness self-examination exercise. The more you understand the programming of your ego self, the less power it has to create suffering in your life. According to the Yoga Sutras, one of the main causes of suffering is that people have a mistaken belief about what brings happiness. Suffering arises when you look for happiness in something that can only bring misery. One way to identify those things that bring you happiness is by looking at how you spend your time and energy. People generally invest extra time in those activities that make them happiest. One approach to examining happiness is to be mindful of your own emotions. When you feel happy, take a moment to identify what happened to make you feel that way. Through self-examination, you may find there are things that bring you great happiness that you simply didn't know about. You may also find there are things that you thought brought you happiness which actually do not. Listed below are major forms of happiness. Consider which form you seek most often in your life. The list is divided into two main forms of happiness, pleasure and self-esteem. Pleasure happiness. Pleasure happiness involves the positive appraisal of a sensation, which is to say, the enjoyment of a perception. Your experience of delight when watching a vibrant sunset is a neurological approval of your sensory perception. The human nervous system is designed to respond with happiness to specific types of stimuli. Pleasure happiness is strongly provoked by stimuli related to eating and sexuality. The nervous system has many feedback loops through which stimulation to one subsystem can spill over and affect another. For this reason, the different types of pleasure can have an interactive effect. There are three general sources of pleasure, the senses, the body, and the mind. Sensory pleasure. Sensory pleasure involves a stimulation of one or more sensory organs. The visual perception of beauty is a common source of pleasure. We innately enjoy looking at forests, mountains, and bodies of water. We find pleasure in the visual appearance of animals, people, and artistic performances. Taste can provide enormous amounts of pleasure. Aromas complement the processing of sensory perception, especially that of taste. Many people find aroma in and of itself to be pleasurable. Sounds provide pleasure in several different ways. Music is probably the greatest source of oral pleasure. Listening to your favorite song can quickly shift your mood from sad to happy. Non-musical sounds can also produce pleasure. Some voices have pleasant qualities. The sound of waves crashing on the shore or the singing of birds can also be pleasurable. For most people, the sense of touch is the most powerful form of sensory stimulation. Sexuality is the best example of the intense pleasures that arise from touch. Non-sexual touch can also be pleasurable, such as the feeling of the sun on your skin or the soothing sensation that arises from stroking the fur of a cat or dog. Body pleasure. Body pleasure is different from sensory pleasure in that it results from sensations beneath the sensory organs. For example, a hot bath provides the body pleasure of muscular relaxation. Another example of body pleasure would be the sensation of youthful vitality or arousal. Body pleasures are very individualistic and difficult to describe with words. One person may enjoy complete relaxation while another may delight in being intensely aroused. 
exercising, dancing, and stretching are sources of body pleasures for many people. The consumption of alcohol and certain drugs can stimulate body pleasure. Alcohol can relax the muscular system. Stimulants such as coffee and nicotine can arouse a nervous system. Of course, alcohol, drugs, and coffee, and nicotine are highly addictive and can have very unpleasant consequences if abused. Mental Pleasure Hinduism and Buddhism view the mind as a type of sensory organ that produces its own form of sensations via mental perceptions or thoughts. For example, pleasurable mental sensations can arise by listening to a funny story, working on a challenging puzzle, or having an imaginary fantasy. In Eastern religions, the mind is often compared to a pond of water. Thoughts are like pebbles tossed into the mind's still waters. The impact of the pebbles upon the water creates ripples that spread across the pond. Similarly, your thoughts produce a sensation that radiates across your entire nervous system. A mind that jumps rapidly from thought to thought can create feelings of agitation or excitement. Thoughts about violence and death generate dark and dreary sensations. Peaceful thoughts produce soothing sensations. Self-esteem happiness. Self-esteem happiness occurs when your ego self approves of your self-identity. Self-esteem happiness is a positive evaluation of who you think you are and what you can accomplish. There are five typical sources of self-esteem happiness. These are status, domination, righteousness, belongingness, and accomplishment. Status happiness. Humans are social animals. We instinctively organize our values around social approval. Hierarchies naturally arise in human groups. The people at the top of the hierarchy have higher status than those at the bottom. We feel status happiness when we perceive that we are valued by other people. Status can be based on having an appearance that is valued by others, such as being beautiful, or status can come from having a highly valued role in society, like that of a healer. Status happiness is based on receiving admiration and respect from others. The level of your social status is somewhat relative because its value may change over time. If you move from one group to another, the old group may have valued your status, while the new one may not. For example, being a police officer may be highly valued in one culture and despised in another. Even if you stay within the same group, the quality of your status may change over time. A person whose status is based on beauty may find that status dwindle through the natural process of aging. In popular American culture, status is closely linked to career and wealth. Typically, when meeting someone at a party, the first question asked will be, what kind of work do you do? Some people pursue high-status careers out of a desire for status happiness. Domination happiness. Status happiness is based on being valued by your community. Domination happiness does not require the approval of others. The crudest example of domination happiness is the bully or sadist. Such people try to increase their sense of self by making others feel inferior. Domination is a basic instinct that can be observed in a variety of animal species. For example, a dog may act out domination through sexual or physical aggression. Humans also follow this instinct, which is why there is a need for laws that enforce civil behavior. Criminal behavior is often driven by a desire to seek happiness through sexual or violent dominance. Dominators are driven 
by a desire to make themselves feel superior by making others submissive. There is a saying that fits this concept well, to make oneself taller by cutting off the heads of others. Domination essentially consists of feeling good when putting other people down. A key characteristic of domination is that it involves imbalanced power relationships. The dominator believes it is always better to have more power. The more power a dominator has over other people, the greater the feeling of self-esteem happiness they will have. Domination manifests itself in more subtle forms in a civilized person. The office supervisor who relishes controlling and humiliating employees is driven by a desire for domination. Many people seek a subtle form of domination through intellectual or physical competition. The drive to win arguments or games is often related to the desire to be dominant. Righteousness Happiness Righteousness happiness arises from the satisfaction of doing what you believe to be right. It involves feeling superior to people who do not embrace your set of values. Righteousness happiness does not require the approval of others. Righteous people have a conviction in their own values and they do not need the confirmation from a larger group. It is healthy and normal to feel self-esteem when you do what you believe to be right. It becomes righteousness when it results in feeling superior to others. Righteous people feel they are guided by a higher set of values than other people. The superior and self-centered nature of righteousness creates a potential for violence. Those who are extremely righteous do not feel confined by laws or conventional values of right and wrong. Belongingness, happiness. Status, domination, and righteousness are based on being separate and above others. In contrast, belongingness happiness is related to feeling closely connected to a group. In belongingness happiness, you feel connected to something larger than yourself. The happiness of nationalism or ethnic pride is grounded in a sense of belongingness. Joy and esteem can come from feeling connected to a rich history of family or cultural tradition. Belongingness happiness can be found within your family, tribe, military unit, sports team, or neighborhood community. Belongingness happiness can also come from feeling connected to just one person. A child sensing love and acceptance from her mother will experience belongingness happiness. A romantic couple will feel belongingness happiness within each other's arms. Accomplishment happiness. Accomplishment happiness arises from the simple satisfaction of achieving a personal goal. For example, you may have a list of chores to do during the day, such as laundry, cleaning your car, and shopping for groceries. At the end of the day, when you have completed all your chores, you will feel a pleasant sense of accomplishment happiness. Accomplishment happiness does not need the approval of others. You do not need to tell anyone about your accomplishments in order to feel good about them. The more difficult the accomplishment, the greater the feeling of happiness. Martyrdom Happiness Generally, self-esteem happiness is based on the ego self increasing its sense of existence through pleasure, power, status, or belongingness. Martyrdom happiness is unique in that it transcends the programming of the ego self. Martyrdom is an external oriented form of self-esteem. Martyrs place a greater value on bringing happiness to others than to themselves. Martyrdom extends self-identity outwards, making the happiness of others more important than the happiness of the ego self. The essence of martyrdom is the sacrifice of personal happiness for the good of others. In its ultimate form, 
martyrs are willing to sacrifice their life. Martyrdom as a form of selfless happiness can be found in the helping professions like teachers, doctors, and community leaders. Parents are often good examples of martyrdom. Martyr parents find great joy in the happiness of their own children. The martyr parent is willing to sacrifice personal interests in order to contribute to the happiness of his or her child. People sometimes play the role of martyr, but they are actually seeking personal gain. False martyrs create the appearance of self-sacrifice in order to acquire fame, power, or wealth. The parent, as a false martyr, seeks to make a child successful for selfish reasons. For example, a father may want his son to be a successful sports star with the hopes of benefiting financially from the son's success. The false martyr parent is like a racehorse owner. The owner wants the horse to win races, but not for the happiness of the horse. Happiness Self-Inventory The following questionnaire is meant as a tool for self-examination. Listen to each statement and consider how strongly you agree with it. There are 36 statements. Some of the happiest experiences in my life involved music. The happiest moments in my life involved looking at artistic images. The happiest moments in my life have been during sexual activity. Some of the happiest experiences in my life involved food. I am happiest when I am using drugs or alcohol. I am happiest when I'm exercising, dancing, sunbathing, or relaxing in water. The happiest moments in my life involved solving a difficult mental problem. Some of the happiest experiences in my life involved being admired by others. When arguing with others, it is important that people acknowledge that I am right. I feel a responsibility to punish people when they behave badly. I am happiest when I am with family or friends. Overcoming a difficult challenge makes me very happy, even if no one else knows about it. The happiest moments in my life occurred while listening to music. I am happiest when I am looking at a natural landscape. Some of the happiest experiences in my life involved sexual activity. The happiest moments of my day involve eating. Physically moving and challenging my body is one of my favorite things to do. Some of the happiest experiences in my life involve drugs or alcohol. The happiest moments in my life have involved learning something new. I am happiest when people show that they respect me. I often find myself trying to persuade other people to adopt my point of view. I believe that I live my life by a high moral standard. All year long, I look forward to those days that I can reunite with family and friends and spend quality time with them. Accomplishing a difficult goal brings me great happiness, even if no one else knows about it. I can easily make myself happy by listening to my favorite music. Some of the happiest experiences of my life involved looking at something beautiful. I'm happiest when I am engaged in sex. I spend most of my day looking forward to eating. The happiest moments in my life involve drugs or alcohol. Going for a run, hike, bike ride, swim, or the gym does more to improve my mood than anything else. I am happiest when I am learning something that fascinates me. I am proud of the fact that many people know who I am. The happiest moments in my life involved winning a competition. I believe that my way of life 
is superior to those of the average person. Some of the happiest experiences in my life involved feeling connected to family or friends. Completing a challenging task is very satisfying, even if no one else knows about it. You can find the entire happiness self-examination inventory in the printed version of this book, along with scoring instructions, or it's also located on the website beyourspirit.com. Look under the Other Resources tab and you'll find the happiness self-examination inventory in its entirety.